Hey everybody, so I'm going to do the review of my bike now. A lot of people have been asking me to do this, but I wanted to wait a while. Because if you haven't owned something for a while, it's like unboxing videos. What's the point of doing a review of something if it's when you take it out the box, you've never used it, you don't know how good it is, etc. It's just, it makes more sense to me to sort of own it for a while. I've done, um, look, uh, 713 kilometres. So, you know, I've done a little bit on it and I'm getting the feeling for it and... Yeah, I'm very, very happy, but I'm going to sort of run over the bike top to bottom, explain a few bits and pieces, and then I'm going to go for a little ride, and I'm going to show you the top speed. So obviously it's a Sinis Apache 125cc, uh, learn illegal at the age of 17. For 16 year olds, you need to stick to your 50ccs. Um, well, to be honest with you, if you're 16, I'd wait a year and buy something like this. It makes so much more sense, because I mean, I've been riding 125cc bikes for six years, and they're fine. But if I had a 50 for that long, I think I probably would have gone insane. I'm going to give you a quick run over the bike, talk about a few different bits and pieces. And we'll point out now that the bars are not standard. You normally get um, black steel ones, I believe, painted black. The exhaust is not standard. Uh, the front pipe is, but I will get back to that because that's a big thing. Um, and the chain I've got on it is a DID heavy duty chain. The one that comes on it is okay, but I mean, I, I think heavy duty chains helpful if you're if you're ragging it around a bit and you're having a bit of fun okay so we'll start at the front intermediate tires these are nylon tires now a lot of people say nylon tires are a load of rubbish and complain about them and i haven't found a problem with these tires um so they're intermediates which is something i'm not used to but i found them to be perfectly grippy in the wet and the dry uh, it's not really been warm yet it's always been cold so but that's what people say in the cold that they're not very good and well i haven't found any huge problems i mean if you're if I could get it to slide around in the cold and the wet, but then I'd have to drive like a bit of a dick to do it. So, you know, um, I, don't, I don't ever see that being a problem. Suspension on the bike is single on the back, and then you've got your uh, upside down forks in the front. Now, this isn't true off-road suspension, so I don't suggest that you go flying off of stuff on it like, you know, like six foot jumps or something. But it can take a good bashing and over rough ground. What Generally, what sort of Supermoto is, and I think Supermoto is amazing, is it gives you the ability to play. I can, windy, I can, I could go over this, I can go off road onto sort of some roads and stuff, I can ride on the road, and it's all fine. Uh, whereas if you had a sports bike, you can't go up that kerb, really. Well, you can, but you know what I mean. Uh, okay, continuing down, the engine is a copy of a Suzuki DR engine. Um, the same, this is the same engine that was in my last bike, which I need to talk about the comparisons and the ori sort of origins of these bikes a little bit. Uh, but it's a very good engine. I have haven't had any problems with them. The, I did, in the very early days of my Pulse, have a problem with an engine that actually ended up being more economical to fix by replacing the whole engine. But that was a Pulse, and I'll talk about them. And it was a very early one as well. Um, and it was a design flaw, which, or, or a manufacturer fault, which basically there was a recall for, as I understand it. But it it screwed me, but that it, I've never heard of anyone else having that problem before or since. Um, carrying on down, you've got the aluminium swing arm that's hand welded. There's some nice welds on there, so you know they're not they're not crap at it. Uh, have I mentioned the dual disc brakes? I may have done. Um, you've got about a 10 litre tank, I believe. As for fuel economy, you're going to get about 80 or 90 to the gallon, I believe. That's if you're driving very, very sedately and you know low revs and. I don't do that, I have a bit more fun, so I probably eat through the fuel. But, at the same time, I don't even consider the cost of fuel, because I use so little of it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, carrying on back, when well, we get to the exhaust, this is a Depth 3 exhaust, which is a handmade exhaust, uh, which was designed for this bike, by Depp, for the Sinis Apache. So, it's not like it's just a, a can I've shoved on it. I bought it from Sinis, it is made for this bike. The front section will be available soon. Um, the rear can is about £160, and the full system, I believe, is about uh, £300, which is a little, it sounds a little bit high, but then it is a handmade exhaust, it is designed for this bike, the front pipe will have, um, they've got chambers and stuff they're working on that's going to do power things, but that's all sort of, at the moment I don't really know any more about that because it's not been released, but it should be released literally in the next few weeks, and I'm talking in 2013 in March, or is it April? No, it's April nearly, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Anyway, um, LED tail light, which is great because on the Pulse that bulb used to blow all the time. Uh, the headlight, it's bright, it's good. You've got your standard side light, well, although my side light bulb has blown, but that's just a bulb, it just happens. Uh, but then you've got your sort of low beam, high beam, and I drive with low beam on all the time, if not high beam, depending on the traffic conditions. 
Uh, to be honest with you, that actually has been switched on since I left the shop. I literally in the shop went, oh, well, that's on then, and left it. Because if you leave your lights on, it will make you a lot safer. Uh, in the same way that I've bought an orange one, because it makes me a lot more obvious, opposed to having a black one. Now, these are available in black, orange, and soon there'll be a green, uh, which does look quite cool. But for me, I wanted to go with the, the traffic cone look. Everyone needs to see me. Obviously, uh, as I say, exhaust, it is much louder than the standard exhaust. Right, there we go. <laughs> It's a nice sounding bike. It's a bit windy, you're not going to get the true sound because the microphone is designed to take sound away. But it's, you can feel it in your chest, it's nice. It's a nice deep, throaty, loud being the point that people hear you coming noise. Uh, and obviously it's a lot better than listening to the buzzings of a scooter or a two-stroke. In my opinion, you might be into two-strokes, I'm personally not. Now, what I was saying about the exhaust, the stand exhaust is made of steel, I believe, um, and it will rust. I've got a few tiny rust spots appearing. Now, it probably, if I left it on there, if I had the standard can as well, that would rust as well. Um, but if I left that on there for three years, it would still probably be fine. It would be rusty, but it would be fine. Um, now, I, on my last bike, cross, I got a, a copy of the exhaust, which is made out of standing steel, which actually ends up costing loss, less than the stock exhaust. Uh, but I don't know where you can get those from anymore. Um, but that, that solves that problem. But standard exhausts tend to be made of that sort of metal anyway, because people tend to replace them, so I don't think the company thinks of spending too much money into it. I don't know, but I, mean, I don't see why else they'd make them out of a metal which rusts quite easily. Uh, but it's, it's not like a huge issue. Rust isn't a huge issue on this bike. Obviously, you've got aluminium, aluminium. The, uh, the powder coat on these bikes is very tough, really strong powder coat, I'm very impressed by them. Now obviously I've talked about my pulse, and a lot of people seem to think that the, the Sinus Apache, Pulse Adrenaline, the Superbike RMR, these are all the same bike basically from different brands. This isn't actually true. The Sinus was the original one. Anything other than a Sinus Apache is a copy of the Sinus Apache. The other difference is, is the Pulse for instance is made in a lot of smaller factories around China. Um, Whereas in the Sinus is actually made in a Suzuki factory using the Suzuki tooling and all of that. So the engine, if they put that cover on it and they put Suzuki on it, I don't think you'd really know the difference. Um, the internals of the engine are slightly better than the Pulse of Hold. Every, basically, everything on the bike is just built to a slightly higher degree. Um, there's a few design things they've done with this bike, which, which they didn't do with the Pulse. It just shows you they're caring a little bit more. There's a uh, chain rubber under here. Now, I don't ever remember the chain knocking sideways or anything becoming a problem but they've put that on there just to sort of you know it, it, it stops a problem it's those little things are the things that tell you that they've taken a lot more care so obviously i'm comparing the pulse and the sinus quite closely the sinus is slightly more expensive but it is definitely worth it for the one reason and this is the one thing that i loved my pulse it was fine but the running costs and the maintenance on it were a pain in the ass and it wasn't talking about mechanical stuff necessarily that used to be fine. Um, I broke a few pieces, but that was through my riding. Um, well, apart from a chain that snapped on me, that wasn't really my riding. That just happened. But you know, um, but the main huge thing that's going to make you want to go and buy a Sinus over a Pulse or the Skybike RMR, or it was a Superbike, Skybike, <laughs> is uh, is the fairings. And I'll explain to you why, if I can get this out of my bag. Edit. Ta da Right, uh, as you can see, this is the front mudguard, which is exactly the same as this. In fact, it's exactly the same as an Ace Abyss one, because it's the same design. Uh, but it's not made of the same things that Ace Abyss ones are made of. This is from the Pulse. Now, as you can see, it's a funny colour on the inside, and it's painted on the outside. And you can also see that when the paint wears through, and this is from where... Imagine this is here. This is from where this, on my bike, used to bang into that. It doesn't actually touch on this bike, but on mine it must have slid down or something on my pulse. Or maybe the design is slightly different. But anyway, it's not a huge issue. It's hidden. Uh, but in other places, it was very evident. Uh, because along this edge on the pulse, it used to show white all the time. Because it had worn, the seat had worn through onto the paint. Now, the reason why these are so bad is because of what they're made of. They're made of a very cheap, very brittle plastic. Now, I say it's very cheap. It's cheap to them. It's freaking expensive if you're buying panels for a pulse. Because I once looked, because mine was mechanically fine, but I wanted to replace all of the panels to make it look new. And the price was just, it was, it was going into hundreds of pounds. 
which is just ridiculous. Um, because it's ridiculous when you think that these break so easily, and this is why. Look, they... Well, did you hear that? Hang on, listen. Can you hear that cracking? It flexes a bit, and then it snaps. There is no great giving this. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm going to snap it in half. But this is the point. You bang this into something, or you drop it, and you're going to snap it. But this is the thing. Because it breaks, I spent, because I didn't want to buy new panels, I spent a long time using epoxy, little pieces of aluminium to replace the little, there was these little push-in um, pins, like here, and the holes where this all connects, they snapped out, and I was having to use aluminium and stuff, because they just became brittle, and I even had them fall off while I was riding. Now, when I found out that they make the panels on this out of a different material, polyurethane, watch this! It's fine! It's the same sort of stuff that, like, Acebis make parts out of, and a lot of other dirt bikes they use on it because it bends and the other advantage is the colour of it is in the plastic because the plastic is the colour so there's no paint to scratch if I scratch that it will still look orange but it just it's so much better because you're going to have a bike you're going to want to keep it nice and new looking and it's just going to fall apart over a while and I'm not talking about mechanically I'm talking about the, the bodywork and it's so expensive to repair it's not worth doing so if you pay a little bit more to start with get one of these, built better, feels great, um, and you've got the bodywork which is just is going to survive an awful lot better, look, it just bends. It's amazing, it was the main reason I bought this bike over buying another Pulse. Now I'm going to very, very quickly explain the, the legalities, obviously CBT, 17 years old in the UK, you need to pay £16 a year road tax, nothing. Uh, and your insurance, I pay about 275 fully comprehensive, but then I'm seven, uh, tw seven, <laughs> yeah, mentally seven, 27 years old, but I do have four years no claims bonus. Um, the bike is from new, I haven't mentioned this yet, 1795 roughly, uh, it depends what dealer you go to, there's lots around the UK uh, that you can go and speak to and you might get a better price from them. Uh, I bought mine from On The Wheel in Brighton, great guys down there, help me out. But my first year's insurance, uh, well I was 20 too just at the time that I very first got it. I was paying about £800 fully comprehensive. You know, it's a supermoto, so it's quite a tall bike. Me at 6'5", I can stand on it, my balls are touching the seat, sort of loosely. <laughs> Sorry, it's the only way I can describe it. Um, and when I'm sitting on it, I can put my feet down fine. But now that I'm 6'5", um, if you're, you need to be about 5'10"-ish. I mean, try one, you might be okay um, if you're a bit less than that. But you do need to be mildly, well, you need to be around the 5'10 mark for it to be comfortable for you, I would have said. Now, what I was saying about suspension is I'm a heavy guy. On the Pulse, I used to wind down the rear suspension when I put a new shock on it uh, to make it just a bit firmer. This is standard. It was perfect. But yeah, as I say, it's, it is a great, great bike. And, and I knew it was going to be a great bike because, as I say, my Pulse was a good bike. But that fairing issue um, and the few other little bits and pieces that just... Like the carb, for instance, on this, this is a much better carb. Although it looks the same, it's actually, uh, I can't remember what the company's called, they begin with M, but they make um, standard carbs for lots of people, including some of the bigger brands. So there you go. It's a great looking bike. I think I've covered everything. If I've forgotten anything, I'll, uh, I might put a few bits in the description. If you've got any questions, leave a comment and I'll, uh, I'll answer them as I can. Now, I didn't mention the gearbox is a 5-speed, so it's 1 down, 4 up. If you don't know what that means, you click it down to go for first, then you half-click up to go for neutral, but if you're driving along and you want to go to second, you click hard and it goes through neutral into second, third, fourth, fifth, and then back down. So it's very, very easy to ride. If you haven't rid ridden a gear bike before, I think this is a perfect sort of bike to learn on because it's, it's not going to throw you off. Have I forgotten anything? Oh, it's a toolkit comes on it. I haven't even opened this yet, but I know there is a little toolkit in here, isn't there? Yes, there you go, a little toolkit. It's got spanners and bits for the spark plugs. You know, it's got everything you need for when you're on the road, which is so handy because a lot of people haven't got any space on the bike to carry it. I mean, this doesn't have any stowing places under the seat. What you carry is on you. One thing I will mention, I'm on the stand at the moment. Look, see it's lent over. It will run in neutral so you can warm the bike up. Put the choke on, let it warm up in the morning. Now, on the pulse, if you do that in neutral, it won't run. On the pulse, you have to come along, lift the stand up, because there's a kill switch on the side stand, which is always active. If it's down, the engine doesn't run. If it's up, it does. So you used to have to sit on it like this, warming it, freezing your fucking nuts off. This is your display. You've got 
your rev counter, you've got lights tell you if you're indicating all your high beams on, you've got a gear position indicator, if you can see there it says it's in neutral, that is first, second, you see, it tells you what gear you're in, just handy to have so you know what you're doing. The speedo is in miles an hour on the inside and kilometres on the outside because say, it is a Chinese bike, they do it that way around, um, and the the uh, taco that tells you how many miles you've done is actually telling you how many kilometres you've done, so remember that. That is not miles, that is kilometres. Uh, standard controls that you'd see on any bike. Now, oh yes, mirrors. It does come with nice mirrors. They look very nice, they're like diamond shape. You can see them in the, my original video when I went and picked this bike up called Two Wheels of Joy. Um, the reason I don't have them is because, as I say, I'm 6'5", I'm very wide, I can't see shit in them, uh, and I've been riding for a while, and it is legal to take them off, so I have. And it also adds to the aesthetics, but if you're a new rider and they work for you, leave them on, forever uh if you take them off it's your own risk but i do i want to get some blanking caps though so i don't have little hills now as you can see sounds nice it's very maneuverable and remember that it's not just new riders that might be interested in this bike people have got bigger bikes and just want to have a little bike to go and have a bit of fun on as I say, it's less than £2,000. Go and get one and you can have a ton of fun. And not worry too much about destroying your, say, seven, eight £8,000 machine. The suspension, as I say, it can take a good good amount of shock. I mean, there's nothing. Take around these corners. Oh, road closed. But, of course, it's Super Mario, so that doesn't apply. And it's all about smoothness. Uh, so the brakes are very good, I'll just show you, I'll show you a bit of an emergency stop from say about 20, this is sort of, in the CBT you'll have to do this, you just sort of go, like that, see, very good brakes, the, uh, I found that the back, uh, it's disc brake, is very good, it's very, you can feel it, it's not going to just lock up on you without you being aware of it, and the front brakes, brakes there's plenty of feel in those. People always seem to want to know about the uh, top speed of a bike over everything else, as if you do top speed 100% of the time. It's relevant and pointless. Don't worry about the top speed, as long, unless you're going on like a dual carriageway. Yes, this bike will do 70, and I will show you that in a minute. Um, but the important thing is pulling out of junctions and getting through traffic. Now I'm going to show you, even though there's a speed bump in front of me, um, I will do not to 30 up there at a normal pace. I'm not going to absolutely gun it because you're not going to absolutely gun it at every junction. Okay, so the light went green. 20, 30. I'm up with traffic. There's way more beyond that. It will do, obviously. The 0 to 50 range on this bike is great, and that is your most important range for day-to-day -day riding, because most of the roads you're going to ride on are going to be a 40 limit anyway. Oh no, cones! Cones! <laughs> okay, so as I say, it's very manoeuvrable. It's a great, great fun bike to ride. Supermoto all the way. Supermotos are so much more fun than sports bikes. Now, my bike's called Jessie. So I need to encourage her a bit. Jesse, come on! You have to name your bike, by the way. You have to name it. It's the law. Uh, MOT failure if it doesn't have a name. I'm joking. Here we go. Okay. That's going to be about 20. 30. 40. 50. Look at the cars. They're miles away. 55, that's 60, and I'm going into 5th. I do have a slight headwind going on, so that is going to be an issue. Come in here. 60. I was doing 60 back there, to be honest. Now, you are going to want, if you're going to do a lot of this riding, to put uh, an extra tooth on the front sprocket, get a new front sprocket, which will give you a few more legs and the lower gears. And I'm doing 70, so I don't want to go up his arse too much. There's 70, as you can see. It's fine. I can sit here... I don't have to over rev it to sit in the traffic, but as I say, if you're going to do a lot of this riding, I definitely suggest putting an extra tooth, uh, uh, the next spot or an extra tooth on the front, which will just give you gears, a few more legs, and it will make sure that your top speed is not going to be quite so high revving.
Sorry I've just shoved this in the middle, but I actually meant to mention this and I forgot, so I've got to do it. Uh, branded bikes. People say, well, why don't you go and get a Yamaha or a Honda or all this? Uh, yes, you can get those bikes, and of course, they are well-known brands and they're good bikes. Doesn't mean you're going to have any less problems with them, but what it does mean is that new, you're going to be paying at least 50%, if not it's like 80% more than what this costs. Why would you spend that extra money when you don't need to? It's great through traffic, it's reliable, it's quick enough, it's fun, it's cheap. What more can you really ask for out of a bike? Do I think you should go and buy one? 100%. If you are looking for your first bike, you will not go wrong with this vision. If you are looking at the other Chinese bikes, uh, do keep in mind, as I say, that this is the original. Uh, the other ones do copy this one, and this is built to a higher grade overall. There's certain parts which are completely different, like they've been made from different materials, like fairings, as I say. It's definitely worth buying one of these bikes. It's definitely worth buying a Sinus over the Pulse. I say, as much as I did love that bike, it was a great bike. I didn't know at the time, like the fact this was the original, and I didn't realize about the fairings. And I only knew about the fairings as it sort of time passed. So, there you go. There is my review. And he sort of looked at my hand, looked at my knee, and just went, nope, you need another month. You just really need, because you said you basically, you've, you're fixing injuries, but you need to get muscle strength back and stuff. And without that, as a cook, um, standing up all day and using your hands all day, it's not going to go well. 